Santa. This room doesn't feel like a student's room. It has a more adult atmosphere. Yeah, the fucking alcohol didn't tip you off? It's the headmaster's private room. Kyoko, hey, you gonna see your dad? I've been through this room several times already, but I still have one little regret. So I decided to check it out one more time. A regret? Okay, let's see if I can find it before... There's a secret fucking door just over there. You didn't... That is not even hidden. That's just... That's just there. Like, hey, buddy, come fucking hit me. There's a computer over there. Let's look at the computer. There's a PC on the desk. Must have belonged to the headmaster. But it's on! Whoever used this last looked like they were very interested in the ultimate despair. The PC still has some search results left on it. And you might be able to get... Yeah, okay, go! Go, go, go! It's one individual, but instead points to some sort of group. That group is responsible for the tragedy, which happened one year ago. They're the worst sorts of people... Wait. So the tragedy happened one year ago... Wait, was that one year ago relative to happening right now? Or relative to... Hmm... Hmm, so how, what what is the timeline here? How long how long has the headmaster been dead or gone or whoever? I, I'm going to assume he's dead because this whole place looks like a fucking bomb hit it. Um, and that's all there is to it. Not much to it is there. But I guess that's the best he could do is a complete kirigiri failure. But any inf any information's helpful, right? I mean, we got to appreciate what we got. That's a good outlook to have. The ultimate despair. It's a group of five people, apparently. Okay. Anything else in here? No? It's a really nice little apartment kind of deal. Neat. Uh, chair. Can't imagine a student using them. They must have been the headmasters. I mean, like, the headmaster has to be dead, right? Otherwise, like, we would have seen him. We, we would have seen him if he was alive. Maybe I can use his keyboard? Desk is home to a computer. It must have belonged to the headmaster. Well, okay, fuck. I mean, alright, I'll take them. I've, I have enough to get everything. Kyoko looks almost meek right now. She must be thinking about something. I probably shouldn't bother her. Like, her, like the headmaster's dead, right? Like, I'm not in the wrong for assuming that. Like, look how fucked up. Like, unless he's in here. Unless he's chilling in here and he's been in here this whole time hiding from Monokuma. Like, I don't even... There's a strange gap in the wall. Is this some kind of design mistake or a construction defect or something? There's a gap here, but not just any normal... Kyoko, you came in here, like, multiple times. Are you telling me that you, the ultimate detective, couldn't notice the most obvious fucking secret door ever made? Are you on drugs, Kyoko? Have you been borrowing from, from Hero? There's a live, likely an open space on the other side of this wall. Secret tunnel! I think I might know how to open it. Okay. So did you know... I saw a program on the PC that I think controls it. Enter the right password and the door should... Oh, so she knew it was there, she just didn't have a way to do it. Okay. But I don't have a clue what the password might be. All we know is probably made up letters and or numbers. We can't really go from there. Hmm. Hmm. What if, what if you what if the password, what if the password is, is her name? There might be a chance, password could be something Kyoko wouldn't have thought of or something she wouldn't want to think of. For example, what about your name? Yes. Fucking like she her like her face is like insulted like my name. You think that failure would put dead put my name on his computer? I never run from 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 from. Oh, sorry. I was just trying to think of what the password might be. I'm sure he hasn't tried. It. I mean, it's totally understandable. But the way she talked about her dad, the idea he would use her name as a password, knowing how she is. Yeah, cause she's a fucking robot. She's a fucking RoboCop. I'ma do it. I'ma fucking do it, and you're gonna feel like such a bitch. You're gonna feel like such an asshole, Kyoko. If it's not, it might just hurt Kyoko even more. No. Don't be. I already know that your guess is wrong. 
Oh my fucking god. What a cunt. Like, Jesus. Jesus, he's just like, mm, yeah, no, he would never use mine. Nah, nah, he doesn't care about me at all. Except, you know, he's your fucking dad. I collect myself, then turn face to computer monitor. Let me just type the password. Typed your full name, Kyoko Kirigiri. My hands are tense, slightly trembling as I finish typing it in. Beep, kern. Kyoko, you're a fucking idiot, kern. Fucking, are we sure I'm not the ultimate detective? For fuck's sake. Kyoko, you fucking robot. That did. So, uh, hey, Kyoko, um, so I'm going around collecting donations from a special secret society, uh, the Makoto is always right club. Uh, care to donate? Care to donate, you know, money, uh, your dignity, and I told you so? F get fucked, Kyoko. Get fucked, Robocop! She's so upset. She's so fucking upset. Oh man, like she, like I, that that just makes me that just makes my fucking day. That just makes my goddamn Oh my god, there's a fucking family picture in the goddamn background. <clears throat> he loved you so much and you turned out to be a cold fucking bitch. Like I I know it sounds like I'm making fun of Kyoko and and it's because I am, but I, I, I kind of figured this would be the case, like, like, I, unless you are, like, the absolute worst piece of shit ever, like, if your kid is, well, one, if it's your kid in general, and two, like, if your kid is, like, the ultimate fucking detective, then there's no goddamn way you're not gonna be proud of that, even if they hate you. Like, fucking, yeah, I mean, like, that's, that's just dumb. Like, you'd have to have, like, absolute narcissist asshole parents to just to have that, and and believe me, I know that fucking feeling. Uh, hey, hey, Kyoko, uh, you, you, you ready for that donation? <laughs> May as well not even have been in the room. Her case was fixed on one thing. A birthday present. Wrapped and covered with such joy. That's what made it so unusual. Uh, let's open it up, Kyoko! Let's open it up! Oh, no, it wants me to look at the present. Alright then. Hey, Kyoko, happy birthday! The more I look at it, the more suspicious I get. Should we open it? I'm getting kind of a bad vibe. Open it up, it's a fucking gun. It's, it's just a gun, and it says, Use on Monokuma. Okay! Be careful, Makoto. You think it's dangerous? No, not dangerous, but surprising, probably. It, it's gonna be a gun. A gun! I've only heard the myths of these th of these mysterious objects in a far-off land called America. They're rampant. But here in Japan, my god, no one's seen a gun in decades. If it's what I think it is, at the very least, it's not something you'll be happy- It might as well be a fucking gun. Just don't scream or any- It's gonna be a gun or a head or something. Something now make me want to scream? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna fucking open it! God, make me not want to open shit! I slowly, so slowly, I lifted it up. Light began to sneak its way into the box. I saw the heads and glanced aside, and... Oh, no! It's... It's... It's a fucking Heath bar, I don't know. Kyoko's advice was no use, I let out a trembling cry. Oh, it's fucking- it's a skeleton! It's a fucking skeleton! Hello, my friends! Are you the headmaster? Are you the headmaster? Ah, fuck it. Fuck you. Human bones. It was the last thing I expected to find in such a bright, joyful bo Fucking hell, did Monokuma put this here? I mean, who could have possibly imagined? Monokuma, you put this here, didn't you? Just- just as I thought. Nani? Alright, here we go. Let's look at this fucking skeleton. What was in the box? It was wrapped up all nice, so I never would have guessed what was inside. Human bones! Hey, so Kyoko, um, is that your dad? Justin, how could you have known that? Do you have x-ray vision, that fucking cybernetic skull of yours, Arnold? I mean, there are bones in there. Human bones! 
That's not that I was thinking of the bone specifically. I just had a feeling it'd be his body. That's pretty much the same thing. Dead guy in a box. My father. Huh? What about him? What you found in the box. Those bones. That body. That's my father. I can tell by the giant crack in his skull. It's a family trait. <laughs> she like lifts up her hair and it's just a fucking hole. Or at least what's left of him. Uh, are you serious? This is Kyoko's dad? Hey, Mr. Kirigiri! You lost weight? Got a haircut? You're looking good. You're looking slim. The same man she's been searching for? How, how can you know that for sure? How do you know that's him? Given all the information we have already, that's the only possible answer. So that same person may very well be the mastermind who planned this all out. And according to files, the headmaster is a man in the late 30s. It's just possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in the school right now. It's a very polarizing. Uh, that's the same fucking voice. It's a very polarizing approach, I know, but. Oh, oh, enough puns. This is a hint. I'm sure I told you this already, but this killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only people to take a single step in host peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. And I, f I fucked up that voice. I haven't done Chihiro's voice in so fucking long that I just did Monokuma's because it's a very similar voice, except Chihiro's is a little bit more nasally. And I fucked it up because I'm an idiot. Oh boy, it's me, Chihiro! Like, it, it's, it's higher up. It, it, you, you, you force, I force the air like higher in my, higher in my throat. And like, I, 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 I basically it comes like with my tongue. It's like, it's, it's really high up. It, it's like up here. And then Monokuma is more just like natural speaking, but with it. So it's, it's more like, like Chihiro's is like a little bit less lispy. And, and Monokuma's is, is a little bit lower, a little bit more, more serious. Until he gets really excited. Then he sounds a little bit more like Chihiro. But yeah. I, I have like I have like seven voices I can do for extended periods of time without fucking hurting myself, so yeah, I gotta fucking mix and match them fuckers. Alter Ego said that the headmaster is probably here in the school. But the only ones who were alive at the start of the killing game were sixteen students. When you put those two ideas together, it doesn't take much to assume. But you know what they say when you assume it makes an anus out of you and me. Also, most likely, my father was in this school, but he was also dead. That's my assumption, anyway. As Kyoko explained her analysis, she was completely calm. Because she's a fucking Robocop. <laughs> What's your name, son? Kyoko Kirigiri. Just fucking Robocop theme plays, she just walks away. She falls down some stairs, too. She's only trying to seem calm. She said it was just a thought, so she knew it was a possibility. It's hard to believe that at some point she wanted to be proven wrong. Which is why she never looked in the box herself or even though she had plenty of chances. I know Kyoko said she wanted to see her father so she cut off all ties. But that wasn't... was that all there was to it? It's been a dream, snake eater. Yeah, she fucking gave up her goddamn prize. She'll never work in this town again. Would she really give up her pride just for that? I couldn't help but wonder. Fuck, that's such a fucking well-framed shot, Jesus. So Monokuma just left this here, he's like, Hey fuckers, how you doing? Set my, set my bear dick. This picture. It's all faded, it must be pretty old. Wait, this is a picture of... <laughs> hey Kyoko, there's someone here, like, they look kind of like a smaller version of you. But it can't be you, I mean, they're smiling. You don't do that. Pretty sure if you get tried, your fucking top of your head would fall off. Hey, Kyoko! So, hey, this is the, sa the exact same fucking thing. Exactly, she just says exactly what I said. Well, this is annoying. Yeah, see, that's the exact fucking reaction I would have expected, cold bitch. I came in here to cut myself free of the pat. Hey, I mean, we have a skeleton here. I can go to the fucking garden and I can grab a shovel and you can smash the corpse up a bit. Would that make you feel better so we can get on with, you know, not dying? Can you save this? 
Like, put a fucking pin in it for later. To now find something like this. So what do you expect me to do now? Maybe not be such a cunt. Then I was right. It's a picture of Kyoko when she's a little girl. Knowing the headmaster had this picture all this time, he must have really cared about her. Why? What? I wanted to face him and tell him myself, to cut him out of my life for abandoning me. That's the whole reason I came here. And now he's abandoned me again. But his ghost just floats through the fucking ceiling. Gotcha now, fucker! He just fades away. Whew. Suck my ghost dick. Worth the wait. <laughs> and this time, he stole the only opportunity I had to move on. Well, that sounds like a fucking personal problem there, Kyoko. Maybe you could, like, put a pin in it. Or I could go get a shovel. And you could just do this the old-fashioned way. Like, fuck's sake, you're wasting our goddamn time, Kyoko. We haven't learned anything except for that the fucking freezers are a thing. Has there ever been a worse fault? Yes, there have! For fuck's sake, Kyoko! Your dad was not that fucking bad. There are worse. He wasn't cut out for the detective thing and knew you ha and knew you were, so he left you behind so you could fucking follow your goddamn talents. Are you saying you would have been happier if he'd stuck around and jobbed the fuck out of it? You fucking idiot. Or if he'd taken you with him and you wouldn't have fucking fulfilled your talents? Like, for fuck's sake, you stupid bitch. Also, breathe a little bit. You're turning blue. Fucking Kyoko. Like, she's supposed to be like this. Like, she's always portrayed as this, like, this bastion of cold hard logic. Blah, blah, blah. And now you get to this shit, and she's just an emotional fucking child. God damn it, Kyoko. Kyoko. Like, you want to see fucking bad parenting? I'll show you bad fucking parenting. Ugh, alright. Is his desk. The headmaster's desk. It's probably hiding some sort of kind of clue, so I really want to check it out, but... I really don't want to touch Kyoko's dad's desk without a permit. For fuck's sake, you s Don't worry about me. I don't give a shit because I'm a fucking child. <laughs> I don't care about you, dad. No, you die for all I care. Oh, wait, you did. <laughs> you sure? Never let anything get in the way of the investigation. I don't. Yeah, I fucking noticed. Fucking necrophiliac. Okay, then, if you don't mind. I'm gonna fucking rub my hands all over it, just whip my dick out and drag it through the dust. Starting from the top, I opened all the desk drawers and looked inside. I rummaged through each one, finding nothing but unrelated documents. But in the last drawer... Huh? Is this... It's an e-handbook, right? And it has a label on it that says, in case, of em in case of emergency, go to the fucking lockers. I'd found some kind of emergency handbook in the headmaster's desk. A handbook with no limitations, given to the school's ultimate authority. The headmaster. I'm assuming that's what that- Oh yeah, no, you- Yeah, you're assuming. You know a little too fucking much, Kyoko, because that's definitely what it is. I mean, like, we haven't opened it, we haven't looked at it, you're just like, Oh, that probably opens everything in the fucking school! Mmm, yes. I think you're probably right. It might prove useful as we continue our investigation. Why don't you hold on to it? But, but Kyoko... I don't need it. If you don't want it, go ahead and leave it here. Then I guess I'll take it. Fuck you, then. Is it really okay? Are you okay? Bust the wolf! No. Listen, Makoto. Huh? Can I ask you a favor? Alright, what you got? I know it's completely unreasonable to ask you this. Can you get me a shovel? I mean, I know it'll only inconvenience you that much more, but... Could you leave? I have- I actually brought a shovel with me. Huh? Just for a little while, I'd like to be alone for a bit. With this shovel. Don't worry, I'm fine. I need to calm down a little. I need to get my emotions in- I need- Thank you, Makoto, for showing me where my emotions lived. That I still had them. Now that I know where they are, I can destroy them forever. You know, Kyoko, you told me before about the relationship you have with your dad. Hey, you're only connected by blood, not by heart and soul. But maybe the pitcher motivated him. Wait, maybe the pitcher motivated him. Maybe he hoped to see me again someday. Is that what you were going to say? If so, it's just a theory. 
A GAME THEORY! Thanks for fucking watching this Five Nights at Freddy's bullshit. <laughs> that isn't an issue that we settle with theories. That picture doesn't change the facts of what happens, what I went through. He's got a picture of him holding you that doesn't even have his face in it. So it's not even about him, it's about you, you stupid bitch! I thought you were supposed to be the detective. You should be able to fucking pick out the psychology from this shit. Uh, oh my god, Kyoko is just... Kyoko was, like, middle tier for me. Like, she was like, well, she's lying and she's a cop, so what? whatever. Like, until she tells the truth, she's just gonna fly, like, straight through the middle. And, like, while everyone else was, like, moving up and down as time's gone on. Like, even Celeste had a high moment until she fucking hit the fucking rock bottom. But Celeste, no, she went straight, 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 and now she's hit here and she's just... Oh god, no, we're gonna die! Just fucking the sound of planes crashing, just... Fucking, like, that that one clip of 9-11 that's used in un and unexpected jihad videos, just... <laughs> that's going too far, that's a demonetization right there. The problem can't be solved so easily. No! Come in aside, but fuck yourself! Once I've got myself under control, I'll return to the investigation immediately. So please, give me some time to myself. Okay, you fucking Black Lantern. I'll see you later. Get it, cuz... Oh, fuck that! I just realized that's gonna go over anyone's head that doesn't read DC Comics. Cause the Black Lanterns haven't been in anything but the comics. They only had, like, well, like... Two... Two things? Two events? So... So in in the it was a shock to me. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll I'll explain after if you care. I find what happened to the headmaster. Like the black clans are my favorite fucking lantern core though because they're just fucking edge lords. There's no doubt that the mastermind performed that evil deed. They killed the headmaster, killed Kyoko's father. They killed him. The headmaster is dead. I figured that. The one leading Hope's Peak staff, the one who finalized the plan to isolate you, was Hope's Peak headmaster. So that same person may very well be the mastermind who planned all this out. See, that's the that's the nasally one. And according to these files, the headmaster is a man in his late thirties. It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in this school right now. I don't, I don't know. I'm still looking at all these fucking zettabytes of porn. Got, did, did you guys like not like check the hard drive before you fucking grab this thing? Damn. We were wrong about that. The headmaster wasn't the mastermind, which means the mastermind's true identity is. Yes, a very polarizing approach. How many fucking times are we gonna do this goddamn flashback? I fucking have it memorized by now. Fifteen of us met in the mail hall. Add Mokuro to the mix and you get sixteen. And including me, only six of us are alive. Everyone else is dead. Or, or you know, maybe they're not. Maybe one of them faked their death. Like... If Mondo wasn't an idiot, I'd say it might have been Mondo, because we didn't actually see Mondo die, we just saw, like, a thing of butter come out. But he's an idiot, so... There's gotta be, like, other deaths that were survivable. Or, like, fakeable. Even she, even she is undeniably dead. So the ones still left alive are... Me? Bianchi! <laughs> Hero, bruh. Tuku. Ah, Hina. Owie. And Kyoko. Only those six people are still alive. Then there's no question. Wait, no! Masaka! Bakana! I refuse to believe it. There has to be some other way. Yes! Someone faked their deaths. If you were smart, you'd check the fucking freezers. But no, Makoto, you're a fucking dumbass. This just has to be. Like, seriously, like, why why are we not running to the fucking fridge? Alright, but, 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 okay. So, the, 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 like, I just want to, like, say this real quick, because they're really, really cool. So, in the, in the DC universe, and you know how you got Green Latin, and he's got the green ring, and it's based on his fucking willpower? Like, each color is, like, a different uh, facet emotion. Like, so you got blue is hope, yellow is fear, pink is compassion, violet, like... Pink is love, violet's compassion, uh, etc., etc. So, uh, and white is everyone. White is every emotion all in one. And the opposite of that is black, which is no emotions, which is death. And there's only really one black lantern, and his name is Necrid. Well, there's two, technically. Black Hand, but Black Hand is 
possessed by Necrid. Eh, whatever. Dip, what, fucking moot point. And the whole Black Lantern thing, you become a Black Lantern by having zero emotions. And the only way to have absolutely zero emotions is to be fucking dead. Like, actual, literally buried in the fucking ground dead. So when Necrid wakes up, and Necrid is basically the, the embodiment of the Black Lanterns, he fucking just throws Black Lantern rings out, and they just seek the strongest dead guys they can fucking find. And... And they just bring them back, and basically under Necrid's control. And, 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 it, and it's so fucking cool, dude. Like, fucking the Black Lanterns are so goddamn cool, like... It, it's, it's like if you gave zombies Green Lantern's powers. Like, we're making constructs and flying and, like, fucking... The, and, and by the way, if you die and come back, a Black Lantern ring can still grab you. So, like, Dead Man, whose superpower is that he's dead. Like, he, he almost became a Black Lantern, but, like, he just had so many emotions or something that he could just be like, No, fuck this, I'm out later, fuck you. And, like, um, the, the ventriloquist, um, the, the, the guy who had, like, the Scarface puppet, he became a Black Lantern, and he just made constructs of Scarface that had little fucking Tommy guns that fired, like, little, like, black construct bullets. It's so fucking cool, because all the cor all the dead bodies, like, they, 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 they're, they like, like, zombies, but they have, like, this, like, shred of who they used to be that affects what their rings can do. It's so fucking cool. Like, uh, if, if you have any interest in it whatsoever, like, go online and find Blackest Night. Uh, it's, it's, it's Green Lantern, Blackest Night. Uh, and it's like a three-part event, I think, and, and it's really, really cool. I own it somewhere. It's really fucking cool. And I say that, and I don't really even like DC all that much. Of course, I don't like Marvel all that much anymore either, but what are you gonna do? All right. Let's use... Emergency one. No, we want to use the other one, you fucking idiots. Oh, you're gonna make me fucking do it twice? Are you kidding me? I hope you don't see anything. We use a clue. I've just got to go through all these lockers, don't I? Hey, that looks useful. There's one thing, some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on, so I can't say for sure whose it is, but there's some writing inside that could be important. I don't like violating your own privacy, but I better take a look. The guy is probably dead. The girl is probably dead. And all letters are spaced out evenly, like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote this must have been really meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook, my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something familiar written there, words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here in communal life. Fucking commies. <laughs> I'm playing. I know, I know that's not what communal means. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. Just so I happened to be the headmaster and my father. Oh, fuck! Kyoko is in on it! He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our student prodigies safe, to keep them as our hope for the future. Only their genius can overcome disaster, and only their hope can overcome despair. For the future of our country, our world, it's not an exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior youth from the new corrupted world, to serve as a foundation, so basically a concentration camp but in reverse. It's the only hope we have. I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. It'd be like if Hitler rounded up all the Aryans instead. And, like, instead of putting them in death camps, put them in where they could only be with other Aryans. As usual, we made a selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. Oh, for fuck's sake, Kyoko, but this also means that you knew your father and you're bullshitting us. Or, I mean, also she has amnesia, so I guess that's also a fair play right there. Ah, fuck it. Whatever. We'll just run it back to her later. This can't be true, can it? But I knew it was, I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko. Couldn't be anyone else. This belongs to Kyoko. What was I doing in this locker? What was she wrote clearly contradicts what she already told me. She said she hasn't seen her dad since he left when she was little. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan. Why are you fucking repeating yourself? Why? Why does the game keep doing that? I don't need to fucking hear it twice. I quickly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about this whole thing. When I reached the last page, question marks spinning through my mind. Just started spinning, so, yeah, so Kyoko is either bullshitting us, or her amnesia is, is, like, false memories, or it goes back super far. Because her father, like, her father has to be, like, 
Her father's a fucking skeleton. He's been dead for fucking ever. So, that amnesia is working real fucking good. Working overtime on that bitch. And when I looked at it, unlike the rest of the pocketbook, his right in here was messy, disorganized, scrawled. What? Despair walks among us, and so we survive. There's a second despair. The hell? Well, I mean, we kind of knew there was more than one despair. So now we know there's at least there's at least two despairs running around here. Dun, 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 dun.